We are here today to answer another one of my most popular comments and that is how to DMX your lights. DJ J Buck. Oh man, welcome back guys to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. We are here today to answer another one of my most popular comments and that is how to DMX your lights and using the Airstream DMX bridge. Fasten your seat belts for this one guys. This is what you asked for and I'm giving it to you. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel, make sure you do that now and let's go ahead and get started and get your pencil and notepads out or get ready to rewind this video to whatever point you need to get it to. So, first of all, we're gonna jump in and tell you exactly what we're gonna be using today. Today, we're gonna to be using the Airstream DMX Bridge along with the ADJ Mega Tripar Profile, two of them, and we're gonna be using the ADJ Element Hex. Now, the reason that I'm using these lights is because I wanted you guys to see, first of all, my most commonly used lights, but I also wanted you to see two wired lights and one wireless light so that you guys can kind of understand based upon your situation, your setup. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we've already wired up everything, so this is how everything is wired up. We've got one XLR cable coming out of the Airstream DMX bridge and it is running into the input on the ADJ Megatropar profile. And then we've got an out coming from the ADJ Megatropar profile going in to the second Megatropar profile. So these guys are now linked. Now, the signal for these lights is now gonna be run through the DMX cords. We're also gonna be using both of the donor receivers so you can see what it would look like wirelessly and why I chose these. All right, so now we're going to dive into our iPad and go to the program for the ADJ Airstream DMX Bridge. So as you guys can see right here, we've got all of our settings and everything here. So our settings look like we have for the Wi-Fi, we have it connected to the Airstream DMX Bridge. All right. And now, in order to connect, you can actually look at the manual uh, and it just tells you exactly how to do it. But basically, when you're first taking this out of the box, you're going to connect it. And then I believe there's like a four digit code that you put in and then you can change the password. But it's pretty much like connecting to your Wi-Fi system at your home or a Wi-Fi system someplace else that you may be at. So basically, you're just tapping into it, putting in a password, and then you're all set. So then we're going to go to the app which is down here in the bottom right corner. And you can see it automatically tells you that we're connected. So once you're connected through the Wi-Fi settings on here, it automatically lets you know that you are connected uh, to the Airstream DMX bridge. You always wanna make sure it says that because when you press buttons and stuff on here and you set up your scenes and everything, you're gonna to wanna to have that set up for you so that it automatically comes on. Otherwise, when you press it, nothing's gonna happen. So I've already touched the lights and everything that we're gonna use on here, but let's go a little further. The first thing we wanna do is hit the, the lines at the top left corner, and we wanna to go to where it says patching. Now what you wanna make sure that you do on the wired fixtures, you wanna make sure that you're patching based on the DMX channel that you are assigned on here. So when I go to make a profile for these fixtures, I'll try to do one right here in the blank one. I'm gonna use number 18 down here at the bottom, where there's no fixture. When you go to make it, you want to go to the brand of the actual unit and then see if they have it already labeled there for you. So basically this one is a There it is, a Mega Tripar Profile. Now you've got the plus on here. These are the older versions on here. So this is just the Mega Tripar Profile. So if your fixture is not on here, you can actually go to the custom setting at the top here. And you see that I've already labeled it Mega Tripar Profile. And you can patch one right there. 
when you hit the patch job, I don't want to hit it right here right now, when you hit the patch job, it's going to put that fixture at the number that you have selected on here and it gives you a DMX address. Let me show you what that looks like. So it takes you to this screen here. Now, you can see where you've got the fixture, you've got the file name, you've got an image. Now the image I downloaded from the internet so you can just go to Google and type in the product and see if it will give you a picture of that particular product and you can use that so that it's easier for you to be able to find the picture that you want to use. I label all these myself because it usually just has just a regular label on here, something like, uh, uh, you know, default or whatever it is on there. So I label it myself. And then you come down to where it says DMX start address. Now, it usually gives you one right there, but sometimes I feel like they run kind of together whenever you're trying to do multiple fixtures. So I'll do a couple of manual addresses on here so that I know that they will kind of spread the numbers and everything. I don't want them to be too close together. So I would, you know, I've already done an override here, but you can change it based on what you need. On here you see I've changed it from two to one, and then you just make sure you, your fixture reads the exact same thing. So this one is still on 81, which I'll show you the back of this fixture so you can see it. And it has six channels on here. Now you definitely want to read your manual to find out how many channels that your particular light has. And then you label those channels at the bottom so that you can assign different colors or different features to different buttons or different channels on here. So you definitely want to read your manual and figure out exactly what you have and base it on that. So once everything is patched on here, you're going to want to make sure you go up to profile in the top right corner and make sure that you select save that on there so that it will save for you. So I've done that on this fixture, I've done that on this fixture, and as far as this fixture, there's one extra step you have to go here. So let's show you what that is. So this fixture is the ADJ Element Hex, and I believe it's under 215 on here, so we'll go into that. Now, everything looks uh, they're pretty much the same and everything on here. You see, this is the version I was telling you guys about where it has the DMX start address. Now, these addresses really don't have a particular reason for the address, but it gives you just kind of, in my opinion, it just kind of gives you a random number for you to be able to make sure that you assign your fixture to. And that's what I make sure I do. I make sure I assign the fixture to that, and I'll show you that here in just a second. I know that upon reading the manual, it has 12 different channels, and I've labeled all of them based on what the manual actually says. So you can see all of those. Now, because this unit is wireless, you actually have to take it a step further. You have to go in a little bit deeper and go into the unit and make sure that you have changed the settings on it. So let me show you that. All right, guys. So this is the element hex. This is the back part of the element hex. When you first turn on the unit, let's turn it off here and we'll turn it back on. It automatically goes to what you had it on last. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the light setting right here is on. When you have it off, nothing is going to come up on the light, period. So when you turn it on, the on feature actually is also a plus. When you're charging these element hexes, you want to make sure that this is on so that when you're charging the unit, it actually charges because I've made the mistake of having it off and I don't get any charge or anything from it. So. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna go through your different settings. And this is the setting right here that I want you guys to pay attention to. This is part of your Wi-Fi setting on here. This is to let the Airstream DMX bridge know that you have a device that is wireless. So what you wanna do is, you actually have 14 different options and stuff on here. Now per the manual, the manual says that the best option for the wireless ADJ Wi-Fi is actually RC14. So that's why I have this fixture set to that. So, and that just pretty much tells the Airstream that you have a wireless device and it's gonna to talk to that unit through that particular channel. So then we're gonna to go to where it has the DMX label. And here is your DMX uh, address on here. So you can see I have it labeled to 215, which is the same thing that we had in the iPad. All right, so I showed you on this unit as well. It might be a little harder to see. But I showed you that if you go through the mode setup and go through, go to where it has the D at and the three numbers next to it, that is your DMX channel switching there. So you see I have it labeled under 81, which is the same thing that I have into the Airstream profile. All right, so that was how the fixtures should be set up for you here. Now, 
Once you have all of those patched into the system, now you're ready to go back to the beginning and select the settings for the lights or select which lights you're gonna use. Now, I already know which ones I'm gonna use on him because I base it on the address that I have on here. So you see that I have those lit up already on the fixture and ready to go. So the next thing you wanna to go to is the channels tab, which is the next tab at the bottom down there next to fixtures. Now the channels tab allows you to be able to adjust the colors and everything on here. Now a lot of these guys require that the dimmer switch be turned on and some of these are automatic on here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna first, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna turn off the element hex here for you. The reason I'm turning that off is because I don't wanna change the settings on the element hex while I'm doing this. So you definitely wanna make sure that every time that you're adding a light to this setup, that you have all the fixtures already set up the way you want to and have them active so that when you're adding the light, it just kind of joins into the family rather than trying to adjust it by itself. Because if you try to put it in by itself, the next time that you go to use your Airstream DMX bridge, and the reason I know this is because this has happened to me on multiple occasions, you try to set up one light into a family of lights, the rest of them are not gonna to talk together. Just the one light you're setting up is gonna to talk together. So you wanna make sure that you have some of these things already, have all the fixtures that you're gonna use linked and synced so that when you're adjusting, you're adjusting all the lights. So sometimes you guys will see me post on social media where I'm sitting there trying to play with lights and I've got them all scattered out on the table. I do that because I want all of them to talk and do the exact same thing because when I'm at venues and doing gigs, it looks like this. Let's show you guys some different scenes and stuff here. If I wanted red, you just pretty much just press the red on there and we've got all the lights lit up on here. Green, your blue, your teal, white, Orange, yellow, pink, and purple. And so that's the point of that. So let's first pull up the dimmer, just like I told you, and you see that the fixtures are not doing anything. Now, if you want a red, Red is at the top here. You can pull up red and you see they all automatically go red. Now all I'm doing on the screen here, I know you probably can see it for what I'm putting on the screen, but I want to show you this also. It looks the exact same. All I'm doing is turning up the red and you can turn that back down. And as long as you got the dimmer off, you can pretty much turn them to just about anything you want to. I got the green, we've got the blue, and we've got the white. And you can strobe if you pull up a second, uh, an actual color. As you can see here, I can strobe. So the one thing that you want to make sure that you leave on for your settings for things like these Megatron profiles is you want to make sure that the dimmer switch is up so that when you label these lights or you label a scene that you want to do, it's always going to register because if that dimmer switch is down, you can press that color or that button all you want to nothing is going to come up at all i promise you been there done that so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the top of the screen here right above where it says mega tripod profile and we're going to select that rainbow at the top there now the rainbow allows you to be able to fit in more colors on here i say that because some of these fixtures are a little bit older than i have and they're not gonna be able to adjust to some of these colors. So like you can see that there's an amber on the screen here and there's a UV. Well, these two lights here do not have those colors. So because they don't, this feature is not gonna be beneficial to me at all. Now this guy here does have those colors. It has UV and it has amber and it has white on here. So when I'm setting up the fixtures here, I'm probably gonna set these to only be the ones to turn on during those colors or get rid of these and buy lights that all do the same thing. Your choice based on your wallet, up to you. So the reason I came to this screen is because I wanted to be able to show you that this plethora of colors here that you can actually just go through all of them and it's at your fingertip. So let's say let's touch blue here and you can see I'm, I'm doing this on here. I know I'm probably putting it on the screen here but you can go through all your different colors and it just registers all the colors because you have them all synced and all linked and ready to go. So you see that right there? 
and then you can stop, you can pick a particular color. Now I can tell you that when I'm setting up these scenes and I have to do them individually, sometimes I don't use the, the actual bars on the other page. I use this because it gives me a better palette of colors that I can use. So when I'm looking for yellow, and I may not know which colors put yellow and stuff together, I'll get as close as I can with this color pad here. Makes it a lot easier. So you can go green or you can go lighter green or into a little bit of yellow. If I want to do closest I can do to amber, it'll probably be that. I go the other way and do a nice teal. You guys have seen me post that. And I've got some blue and stuff on here as well. So that's how to DMX these fixtures. I mean, pretty much I've connected the Airstream DMX bridge into my first fixture, and I've pretty much come out of my first fixture into the second fixture. Now, you can do it that way, or you can connect in your wireless donors. Now, pretty much what you wanna do is I'm gonna tell you that this particular wireless donor right here can control seven of these dongles all right so you can put seven wired fixtures and use seven of these wire, wireless dongles and connect in and it's just like daisy chaining one to the next so i'll show you i'll demonstrate so i've already connected the receiver into the airstream dmx bridge and i'm going to put this dongle in that one and these are all into the inputs and you'll see at the bottom of the wireless dongle that it only has the input connection on the back, on the bottom of it. All right, so now they're connected just wirelessly. So now we're gonna pick up the iPad again. And as you can see, they still work. So now it's less wire that you have to daisy chain them off of, or you could use this, this feature and stuff so that you don't have to run wires all over the place. And, and I know it's cut down on a lot of my wires and sometimes if you guys are not taking care of your XLR cable, sometimes you can damage them and you think you've connected something, you got something high in the air or you're trying to find out which one is not receiving what and it's like a mission impossible in there. These wireless dongles save on a lot of that. Now these guys usually last me about, if it's a full charge, these guys usually last me about anywhere from six to seven hours, which is really good. And I'll take care of pretty much any event. But I can tell you that if you've got a full weekend of events, you wanna make sure that when you're done with that event that night, you go home and, and plug those suckers up immediately because it takes about two and a half, three hours sometimes to get these things on full charge from zero. So you definitely wanna make sure that you are charging these things all the time. And you see, I make sure I charge them probably about two nights before so that they have a full charge and I'm not worried about it anytime after that. All right, so you can see all the plethora of lights here, which is awesome. So now we're gonna come back out and we're gonna clear everything out. I'm gonna use the clear button at the top left corner and I'm going to clear all selected fixtures and you see everything turns off. Now, let's go back to fixtures and everything on the home screen. So now, back on the main screen here, and now I'm gonna turn off these two lights that you guys that I had set up, and I'm gonna select my element hex. So it's the only one that is selected right now. So anything that I do on here, these lights should not come on, and because this is wireless, you don't have to connect a wireless dongle into it. So it should just receive the signal from the antenna, because one of these is actually for your main fixtures, and the other one is actually for your Wi-Fi or wireless fixtures. So this one should just pick up the signal from that actual antenna, and so I'm gonna go back into it, make sure that my dimmer is up. You can slide up the red here and get some red, get some green, get some blue, get some white, amber, and UV. Also, when you go to the rainbow and everything at the top, you can actually select any color on here and see. I'm just going right across the screen on here, guys. I know I have that on the screen there as well, but I'm just taking my finger going right across and it's changing, very responsive. And you see it's only changing this fixture. It's not changing anything for this fixture. So now you've seen how I've actually DMX these lights and I know you guys have been asking for that and it's really, really, really not hard um, if you're using the Airstream DMX bridge. Now some of you guys may have a different uh, type of format as far as your main hub for uh, your DMX and I just found that this is probably the easiest uh, that I have found. Uh, I know you guys see that some of my up lights are on the DMX 512 and that can be kind of complicated and stuff a little bit here. I can go into that on another video, but basically as long as you come out of the Airstream DMX bridge into your unit, 
out of your, this unit into the next unit, you should be fine. And wirelessly, if you're going to go wireless and stuff on here, you just make sure that you have typed in all the correct information as far as addresses and different functions that the actual light has. It took me a second to try to figure this hex out, so definitely read your manual. Read the manual on here. It will definitely save you a lot of time instead of just jumping right into it. You can look at the settings and everything that I've used on here and probably jump right in as well, but it's better if you read it so you can understand it a little bit better. Also, I just want to throw out a quick book tip and let you guys know that for this element hex, this hex can actually be used like a hub. So let's say you've got a fixture that's a little bit further away and you don't have an XLR cable that's that far, you can actually run an out from this fixture into another fixture and it does exactly the same as your wireless fixture. This technology stuff is really, really cool. So you guys do not want to miss out on that. Well, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I hope this was informative. I, I really am trying to give you guys exactly what you asked for. So I hope this is what you needed. Leave comments and everything down below. Subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and make sure that you find me on social media because I've got tons more for you. Thank you guys for viewing. And if you don't know, now you know. Book Club, we out. Peace.